Good morning. Hey, we're going to take a look at uh, one of my best friends shop. His name's David. He's a veterinarian in town. Um, I'm really excited to show you his setup. He, this is where I worked before I built my shop. Um, he's my partner in crime with woodworking and we've done a ton of projects together. I always learn something from him and he makes an awesome use of his two car garage space. And I feel like it is super useful for woodworkers to see what normal guys do in their average spaces with the tools that they've been able to accumulate. Not everybody has a high-end 3,000 square foot shop with every tool known to man in it. Uh, most of us are just working off of what we've built uh, piece by piece. So this series will be called the Song Series, the Shops of Normal Guys. And I'm super excited for you to see it. There's a couple more videos coming out right after this one. So stay tuned to my channel and please do me a favor. I'm just starting out. Like and subscribe. Any support is super helpful. Thanks so much. Welcome to David's shop. This is David. Today we're going to take a look at his two car garage shop in which he has created all kinds of wonderful pieces out of. Uh, he uses his space wisely and I can't wait to show you kind of step by step, space by space, tool by tool, what he's working with. So stay tuned and enjoy David's shop. This is David's DWS 716. It's a 12 inch DeWalt miter saw. Um, I think it's 3800 RPM. It can cross cut a 2x10 is pretty much its max crosscut capability. Uh, it's a pretty classic saw for woodworkers to have. I see it in a lot of people's shops. Um, it's kind of old faithful. It's got detents for all your, your uh, standard miter positions and it has pretty decent dust collection. Not There's no miter saw that has really perfect dust collection, but um, it, it's pretty good for what it is. This is David's joiner. It's an 8 inch Laguna helical head, 3 horsepower, um, joiner. It's got 83 inches of bed length. Um, it's got it on a, a Bora mobile base so he can move it around easily. Uh, this thing is awesome. This thing is a beast. The helical head and the power it delivers really makes jointing quite easy. And sometimes when I have really figured wood, I'll, I'll joint it here instead of my Powermatic 12 inch straight knife joiner because it is just more forgiving um, when it comes to grain. This is everybody's favorite uh, the wall. Lunchbox planer. I think it's the 735 um, straight knife. I don't have I don't have any modifications to it or anything. Um, but as long as you keep sharp blades in it, it does a really really good job. It's 13 inches wide, um, so it does it does what it needs to do. Um, it's probably one of the places I could see myself improving on um, in the next year or two um, to a floor standing or heavier piece of equipment. Yeah. Dust collection is a hacked harbor freight uh, i think it's like two horsepower or something like that um with a different uh, like aftermarket canister filter on it next up is david's table saw he is rocking a saw stop 1.75 horsepower uh, he's got the jessam stock rollers on it and also a, an incra miter gauge it's his favorite tool he's got tons of jigs he's got the ultimate jig he's got a table uh, leg taper jig Crosscut sled, you name it. This is where he spends most of his time. It's an incredible machine, and for a veterinarian and a musician, uh, the safety features that Sawstop includes with their saws are imperative to him. He would have a hard time performing surgery or playing his uh, music without all of his fingers. This is David's 14BX Laguna bandsaw. It's got a 12-inch resaw capacity. It's got ceramic guides in the guide head on top and below. It also has a 1.75 horsepower motor. It runs off 110. Um, it's an excellent, excellent bandsaw. Very easy to operate. I've resawed a bunch of wood on this on this particular bandsaw. Uh, mine is only slightly different. It doesn't have the disc brake that this has, but it is an incredible saw and it will serve him for a long time. Uh, it's just not as... Thanks, FedEx. So, following the bandsaw, we've got the traditional joinery bench. Yeah. You built this thing a long time ago, right? I did. This was a this was like intro to woodworking. Um, 
He's sketching on the stickers. That's fine. This thing, like, intro to woodworking, I was using a lot of hand tools. Um, I, I was in college and vet school and um, didn't have a lot of space to do anything, but I managed to piece this thing together with a couple of hand planes and a cheap job site table saw. It's made out of southern yellow pine with some um, oak on the places that need hardwood. Um, it's been with me for probably almost 10 years. This thing's a beast. So This is David's hand tool cabinet, and this is a work of art. He has really put a lot of recent time and energy into building it. Um, before, his bench was covered in six inches of tools that are haphazardly scattered on top. Uh, this is a huge improvement to his shop. I'm always giving you a hard time. Half the time when I show up, I spend the first 30 minutes just helping him clean off his bench so we can get something done. Yeah, what do you got hiding back there? Not as much in here. Yeah. Shop panels open. All my chisels and stuff. So there's a ton of storage in here. I just finished it probably two or three months ago. What's up top? Oh, uh, yeah. Some mallet storage, a couple of braces. So, very nice. But yeah, this thing is now keeping thing, keeping tools and odds and ends from sitting on top of my workbench. Yeah, it's nice to be able to see your bench. It's nice. I feel like you can tell a woodworker's experience by how many clamps they have. David has over 60 clamps in his arsenal. Uh, not all of them pictured here, but he's got a, a pretty awesome clamp storage below his wood storage uh, and next to his bench. Uh, he's got everything from parallel clamps to F clamps. He's got some interesting uh, hanging solutions with wood storage up top. Wood storage is with conduit pipe and two by four mounted to studs against his wall. What is a tip that you could share with other woodworkers, either new or old, that could help them? Yeah. I would say that you can you can do more than you probably think you can with the tools that you have. So if just because you see something and think, oh, there's no way that I can do that. There are multiple ways to do almost everything. And so I would say don't hesitate to look for a different way to do a certain operation or a different way to you know, approach some task because you can probably figure out a workable way to do it. Um, and if you can't, that's an excuse to upgrade tools or buy more. Yeah, so. absolutely. All right, I did think of one more. How do you want to grow this year as a woodworker? Like, is there any specific thing that you're looking to tackle, project, techniques? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to become a better finisher and a better perfectionist, not settling for, you know, mistakes or um, settling for something that could have been done better. Um, I have, I've just bought the plans for a... Uh, lounge chair by Phil Morley. I'm gonna build a pair of those this year. Hope, hoping they come out pretty good. So, uh, yeah, just trying to just trying to you know approach perfection as much as possible. Uh, and the other the other thing I would love to get into is doing like some curved kind of work, bent laminations or um, different things like that. Something I haven't explored very much. So nice, very cool. Well, thanks for letting us into your shop today and yeah, it's awesome. taking a look at everything and kind of like looking.